In the upcoming video, I'm going to be showing you how to fit this Westphalia tow bar kit to this Audi A5. Coming up right after this. So in this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the bumper off of the car going inside the uh, boot and removing the internal so we can get to the bolts or if you're watching in America trunk um, so we can actually get this frame uh, and all the bits and pieces in this bag which we're going to cover now it's not going to be an unboxing it's more of an unbagging um, but I'm going to take you through all the stages step by step what to unbolt and what to fix to actually get this to get this bad boy of a tow bar onto this bad boy of a car. So the tools you're going to need to complete the job is a suitable torque wrench. That's for actually torquing up the frame to the correct torque. <laughs> um, adjustable spanner, uh, a magnetic grabber, that's for some of the interior trim parts where the screws are a bit finicky to get out. 17mm socket, 10mm socket, a T20 star bit, T25, T30, T30 socket, a small screwdriver type sticky thing for the actual frame, and a long reach 10mm socket that's for actually removing the bumper parts. So this is the Westphalia goodie bag and so let's have a look and see what we get in the bag. So we get the power connector which is what the seven pin power bolts into and don't quite know what that is yet. We have the seven pin connector power. They give us some gloves, that's nice. Fits a large man's hands. So we get the instructions. Normally, turn it around. Normally, as an engineer, I don't read them. We get a bolt bag. So in here we have a cover that looks like we're going to have to bolt them in. Great, that's going to be fun and I already know what they are and that's not going to be fun. So we've got lots of washers, some ridiculously big thick bolts. Westphalia bag for looking after a ah, tow bolt. So here, so this is the key section and they've nicely provided me with some keys. So is there a code on these keys? We'll pop that in there like that. Then we lock it. And that's it. Right, let's get this beast installed. So the first thing is protected. Just pop them up. Then you'll be able to remove that. Remove the wheel. So to remove this section we've got some guiders at the front but there's no screws or bolts on this part so we literally just lift that up. Remove that section and then we've got the Audi Clips of Joy. So once that back section is off, we can remove the side sections. And to get this panel off, we're gonna be removing the luggage ties. So we've got one there, one there, one there, and one there.
but once you've popped this part out which is like the interior trim it's crazy this door is for a tub on. Um, that reveals a screw at the top which is a t20 so unscrew that take that out and then the whole thing I'm hoping will come out and there we go side panel removed you can just move this out of the way a little bit but yeah there is a hidden screw there which is why I was having so much difficulty I was gonna say I thought it'd just pop off but yeah just just there Next section we're going to remove the light clusters and this is relatively easy because we have this plastic bolt at the top. If you can't manoeuvre it you can pop, pop a screwdriver in and, and that just loosens that up. So for the bottom screw you need a long reach 10mm on a little extension arm. I'm sure the bolt will go inside the socket and it will come out. But there is a long drop in there right to the bottom and I'm frightened to death that I'm going to lose it and I'll never get it back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove a load of tissue in there. And then I can then, if I do drop it, because no my luck, I will. So with those two bolts off, what we can do is we can remove the light uh, and then shimmy it back. It should just pop out and then remove that clamp. And there we have the light removed. It's these ones that it's kind of locked into. And you remove the light just by pushing that in and off it comes. So we'll get the other side removed. So in the next section of the video, we're gonna be removing the bumper. This is the scary bit. We're gonna find the jacking point. So I'm going to leave the jacking stand there and just take the pressure off of it. Uh, I'm hoping I won't have to do the other side. So we've got some bolts to remove. We've also got to drop the exhaust as well to put the frame in. So coming inside the arch, we have a bolt at the top. We have another bolt here and another bolt here. So we need to remove these three as well as the other three on the other side coming in underneath so one two three and then the last part is this it's kind of a push bolt that you have here 
you pop that up and then the bumper should pop off. So we have some plastic clips here which should just pop off. Oh. some plastic clips down the other side so once you've pulled out the side parts on each side and everything's out you hold the bumper from both sides that should in theory allow you to remove it uh, if you loosen up these cables to the parking sensors what we're going to do is pop the bumper on its side then crawl underneath and remove the parking sensors Coming up underneath, I found it easier to disconnect the sensors. Like so. And then the wires are kept in with these Audi jaws and they just kind of clip on. So what you do is bend it back and then it will just come off. But mind your fingers because I've trapped my fingers. All you do is bend, bend these two back slightly and then the whole sensor drops out. And then the bumper is free to be removed. So for this bolt removal you're going to need a T30. And these are not hand tight. And now with a bit of luck, that slides out. Now if you have a look there, and remove the sticker. It allows us to see right down the back. And we've got the same on the other side. There. This is where you find out it doesn't fit. And there we go, that's aligned. We can see straight through. Time to put, uh, we don't use the original bolts, we'll use the new bolts. So the next section we're gonna construct the electrics before we bolt it in because it's going to be difficult to get into. I thought I was missing a piece actually. When you look at the instructions there's kind of a, this part here and I thought that was a separate piece of metal but it's not. So what we're going to do is we use the M6 screw to pop through the back and we have this little piece of plastic and we pop that in there and then that kind of spins around. We have an M6 washer. So pop that on there, pop the washer on, 
and pop the nut on. So here's the other angle. So I was wondering what this piece of plastic's for, but when you bring that up, that actually locks in at the bottom there. And then you've got your electrics on this side, like so. And it comes down and you plug in. And I've got a little spring to attach, so let's attach the spring. Use our small screwdriver. Oh, come on. So in this next section, we're just going to align. You can see it there. So these are the big bolts. And we've also got the washers. Just pop the washer on. Pop that through there and tighten that up. Then what we're going to do is use the torque wrench and set it to 60. Which is about there. Now you hear that click, that means it's at the 60. So that is as tight as it should be. Do the same for the other side. Right, that ain't going anywhere. So now this is torqued up, everything's in where it should be. And we've removed that tape. We're going to do, don't forget your washer. I'm just going to drop that through there so I can see the bolt on the other side. And we've got the same one here as well. The one thing I've just noticed, that bolt we've just tightened up is actually exposed to the elements. There. So what I would do is pop a bit of grease on that just to protect it in case you ever come to remove it. So for this next section, we're gonna drop the exhaust. There's a bolt up in here. I'll just see if I can try and capture it. And for that, you're gonna need a long reach. A normal socket doesn't fit. A long reach 13 on an extension bar because it has to come down, so you need the extension bar. So the next thing we're going to do is remove the heat shield bolts for which there is one at the back. There's one here and also underneath there is one here and a, another one over in that corner. So for this we're going to use a long reach 10. So for the other side of the exhaust, we're going to come underneath the car and right at the back there's a 13mm bolt there. Uh, and that will then allow you to actually drop the exhaust enough to get your hand in. The exhaust won't drop all the way to the ground because there's a big protection beam here, which is actually supporting it. So you're not, it's not gonna to drop too much, but it's enough to get your hand in to put the bracket uh, to, to tighten up that bolt. 
fact you don't even need to remove it all the way because that's now sitting and that's just sitting there so it kind of unbolts enough for you to bring it down and then once you've dropped that exhaust there is then enough room for you to get right to the back so then you put the bracket on that bolt so a little tip for you if you use a 17 mil spanner and lock that onto the bracket when you're tightening it up it'll allow you to hold it in place while you're getting it to the correct torque good hint is if you if you hold the spanner over the exhaust it allows you to hold the spanner and then use your other hand to tighten that up so uh, this is on the other side you might have an exhaust there I don't know but I believe this is the add blue tank so we've got two bolts there and we've also got we come underneath Got like a protective shield bolt there, and then coming right underneath, we have a bolt at the back and also a bolt here, and then that should allow us to, to lower the tank enough just to get his hand in and do the other side. Uh, and that's the vault at the back. You see that? That gives you plenty of room to then tighten that up properly. For those of you who are about to moan about supporting my tank, my Ad Blue tank is actually empty, so there's nothing in it. So that's why I kind of just let it sit. It's okay, but if you had a full Ad Blue tank, I would probably use a jack or something underneath it just to support it. Already one step ahead of you. There we go. Right, so add blue tank is now bolted back in. Heat shield for exhaust and exhaust is bolted back up. The only bits we've got left to do is to put the luggage holders back in, into those. And then on the next bit, we're gonna cut the bumper. And do the same for the other side. Uh, another thing as well is the tape that you removed from there, you can actually pop over the old hull because there's no bolt in there. Not that anything's ever going to get through it, but just pop that back on.
So what you need to do is put the parking sensors back in. Bring the bumper as close as you can to the car. And the easiest way is to climb underneath. So you can see here you've got little clips for the sensors and then just pop those wires back on the holders like so and you've also got these little teeth as well pop the little teeth back on once you push the teeth back, I've got to hold the bumper to do it, but um, push the teeth back on, pop the wires back in, and then we can lift the bumper on. So when the tow bar is not on there, it's completely, utterly invisible. So when you come underneath, you've got your little window that so nobody can see. So there you go, the invisible tow bar. So I'm going to show you now how to attach it. Because I've had a mare for like the last hour, hour and a half, trying to work this thing out. Because from the manufacturer, this green bit was basically on this, which is the locked position. You can't detach. So you can't, you can't attach a detachable tow bar when it's in the locked position. So I'm going to show you what you've got to do is pull it. So pull it underneath, make sure the red key, red key is facing forward. So get your hand underneath it, pull forward. And that is attached. It clicks and there you go, done. And that there, I'll show you on screen now, means it's perfectly safe. Turn the key back towards you, take the key out and that's it, done. And that is now attached. Happy camping. Right. Detach. Key. In somehow. There you go. Move it to the front. Pull. And twist it forward. And then it comes out. It took me a couple of goes to get used to it. But I've done it. 
It's actually pretty simple. But you just have to remember, unless that is the unlocked position. So red, danger, is not in the green, basically is what it's telling you. Yeah? Which is fine. But when mine came, basically this green bit was the green section here was actually inside this bit so it was locked and I couldn't get it in there and I was pushing and pushing and pushing and I thought why is it not every time I turn this lever I could feel that the balls were maneuvering so I was thinking maybe it's faulty and I was on YouTube and forums and trying to work it out and like you know you see everybody else's videos and they're like click there you go see you later what no one tells you pull it twist as soon as I've done that, it's fine. It really is quite simple. And that's it. Locked on. So, I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Smash that like button if you took enjoyment and information and if you generally enjoyed the video then do give it a like. Leave me a comment if you've got any questions or got any comments on things that I've done. I'll try to respond when I can. And join me in the next one where we're going to be doing the electrics for the tow bar. So until next time. See you later. <sighs> we'll be doing that again in a hurry. Oh, oh God, it broke my bloody neck. So I've just noticed underneath that bolt you've just tightened up One thing I've just noticed, that bolt we've just tightened up. <laughs> really? <laughs> Planes now, really? I can't film nothing. Can't the whole world just stop while I'm filming, please? Cars as well. Hello, helicopter. Oh dear. Anyway, <clears throat> take two. Forward. And it doesn't work. Let's try that again. So key forward, pull, twist. So I'm going to show you <laughs> for the second time. <laughs>